Okay, so I want to um, reconsider the, the concept of simultaneous events in different reference frames, because we now, now that we have this machinery, we can now kind of translate one coordinate system into another, only using diagrams, so we don't need to resort to equations anymore. This is really powerful for actually analyzing intuitively how two, different, how two reference frames might predict each other to be, you know, happening. And so I'm going to do a normal, we're going to consider a normal situation, motion in the x, x prime direction. So it's moving, again, exactly how we said it before. We're, gonna, we're not going to worry about the backwards motion, uh, so we're going to assume v is positive. If not, reorient your axis so it is along the x-axis. And that means that our normal space-time events, or sorry, normal Minkowski diagram, is going to look like this, ct, x. And I'm going to use red for the, the moving frame. We now have our ct prime and our x prime. And I'm going to make these a little bit exaggerated just for sake of... Okay, so um, let's look at this diagram, uh, a little simplified here, and let's specifically look at two events that are simultaneous in s prime. And specifically, maybe let's consider two events that are simultaneous um, at t equals zero. t prime at equals zero. Remember, we have to go by their clock. So, if they're both happening at t prime equal to zero, what that means is that if we look on this diagram here, we can denote, and I'll, I'll use blue, we can denote uh, one event uh, we'll say happens at we'll say at everything of zero at the origin. So here is event A happening at t prime equal to zero and x prime equal to zero, and then here is event B happening at we'll say t prime of zero and four light years, uh, seven light years away from event A, and again at t prime of zero. They're both on the t prime axis. So these two events are simultaneous according to this observer because they both lie on the space-time diagram where the t prime coordinate is zero. So that's really a cause and effect. If they both have that value, t prime of zero, they, they by definition have to lie on the x prime axis. And then now the way that we've already uh, been shown how to draw that x prime axis here naturally shows, I think, graphically why those, those two events will not be seen simultaneous in not only s, but in literally any other frame. And we get that by simply just taking, if you look along this s, uh, coordinate system here. If these are in fact 90 degrees to each other, these tick marks are at right angles. So in this case here, if these are the tick marks in space, we see that if you were to find the xy position of this, we're going to have something like here. So we're going to have some position in x, one, two, three, four, five, maybe 6.5 light years. I've done that pretty well, so a little bit less than this guy saw. That's because of length contraction. So that's gonna be a little bit shorter distance, but it's gonna have longer time separation. So 1.5 years or something like that. So I've just stated it's x, y co uh, coordinate on this diagram. And to be clear, the xy coordinate on the primed axis would have been right here. The same thing here would have been seven light years, comma zero in s prime. So, so, because the axes are now shifted, this is exactly why we no longer have synchronous events, or why we no longer have 
cases where the time shift in one is the same as the time shift in the other, or spatially as well. So it, it's a really natural interpretation for seeing why, why um, you know, not only events aren't synchronous, but also why things are shifted. If you were to tick off exactly what one light year is there, one light year is there, you're naturally going to see as you fold the axes, you fold the axes up, there's going to be a, a projection effect where what is one distance there will be different along a longer path, basically. So that's a very natural interpretation of length contraction or time dilation. The hypotenuse gets longer, but its projection in the t-axis and the x-axis stays the same. So kind of nifty, huh?